All right. So yeah, go ahead now and take your fingers. We're gonna palpate this, palpate this area. If you just joined us, I'll show you where. Um, this area right around here can get very, very tender. So if you can reach your fingers there, go ahead and do it. And you can just use your fingertips and kind of press in and just notice if there's any tenderness. You might need to really breathe as you do this. So start to, cause it's tender, right? It's a little uncomfortable. Breathing in and breathing. Ooh, I just found a spot. So just kind of move your fingers around and see what you feel. It tends to get real tight in there. And then kind of shake that out, let it go. We'll do the other side. Let's circle the shoulders around and about. And then take your other hand, whatever side you started with, and see if you can get into this area. And just kind of feel because this is what I would call one of those forgotten areas where we don't think about it. It's behind us, right? So we're just not as aware of it. And give it a little pressure and just notice, just by becoming aware of it, that's the first step. And if you feel, I'm feeling right in that, like where that shoulder blade is, the edge of the shoulder blade, it's kind of tender in there. This actually lines up with the heart meridian. If you um, follow Chinese acupressure or meridian points. And then let that go. Yep, that's a good way to do it is to hug. Miss Heather's got that. So circle the shoulders around and about. And then let's take our hands and bring them to the sides of our ribs. So we're gonna focus today on the sides of the body and um, really loosening and strengthening the upper body. So hands on the sides of the rib cage. Breathe in and feel the expansion from right to left and left to right. So sides of the ribs. We often think about the belly expanding, which of course we want, but we also want the whole circumference of the torso. Breathing in and breathing out through the nose. And then take one hand to your belly and one to your heart. Reminding ourselves to belly breathe. So we're in and out through the nose. Soft breath in, soft breath out. And now let's open up the arms, spread your fingers, relax your shoulders down your back. Good, and let's give a hug. So right arm over left. Notice where your hands touch. This is back to that area, right? That tender area. So you might work your finger pads up and down it a bit. And if one arm, if you wanna just do one arm at a time, that's fine too. And then open it up. Spread the fingers, thumbs upright. Exhale other way, left over top. Big hug, really feel yourself give a hug. What's it feel like to give yourself a hug? We don't normally think of ourselves that way, right? But yoga is a big hug. It's a big internal massage. You get to give it to yourself. Take a breath in and feel the widening expansion into your arms and your palms. Exhaling out through the nose. And we let it go. Good, take your arms into cactus. Elbows are a little bit lower than shoulders. 
As we exhale, we're gonna pull the arms towards each other, take the chin to the chest. So we're curving like the cat and inhale, open it up. That's it. Exhale, rounding. Inhale, opening. You got it. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. So really start to feel the curve of the spine. I'm just showing you the curve. Exhale, we round, we lean back. Doesn't matter whether the forearms touch. We're just bringing them towards each other. Inhale, open it up. Good, one more. and inhale and open. Good, interlace your fingers, pay attention to what thumb is on top. And then now press your palms away from you, trying to straighten your arms without locking the elbows, relax the shoulders, push away. Now, while you push away, inhale, push down through the balls of your feet, lift your heels. We can't ignore the lower body, right? And then exhale and slowly lower down. Pressing wrist lines away. Take an inhale in, lift the heels. Now you can always skip part of this, do the upper body, not do the lower body, do the lower body, not do the upper body. You have to make the practice your own for your body. Exhale, lower. Whatever thumb was on top, reverse it. You know, it's a little bit of a mind teaser too, because I have to like look at it. Oh, well, the right was on top. So now I gotta reverse all those fingers. It takes a moment. It's okay. Press the wrists away. That's why we do it. Silly things like that. They build our neuro pathways. Inhale, heels rise. Push down through the big toe. Don't even look at it, but press down now through the second, third, fourth, and pinkies. Exhale, lower the heels down. Open up your arms and exhale, release down. Let's do a little walking in place. You can use your hands underneath your thighs, or you could use a tie potentially and put it up behind your thigh. So inhale, right leg lifts, exhale, let it go. Now you get to determine the pressure, meaning how fast the leg goes down, how quick you alternate. Try to do it with some breath action here. So inhaling and exhaling, slow it down or speed it up, you decide. So you can use your hands and you could also use a tie. I'll show you what it looks like. You keep going, you keep going. So it could be something like this and then doing the other side, but you know, it's like a lot of work to do that. I think the cane would actually be easier. I'll just show it so you can see. So you could do something like this. Inhale one leg up and then the other. But I think the hands are actually easier. All right, even it out. And then come back to neutral. Take your right arm forward, touch your fingertips towards the shoulder and see how lifting the elbow up feels to you. Good, and then maybe you use your other hand, your left hand to bring it into center. And that gets into that area too, right around here. In fact, if you wanna take your fingers and kind of press in there, gentle, right? It's always gentle, but then you get to determine how much you really get in that area. And then release it down and other side, left side, take your fingertips on top of your shoulder. Maybe give a little massage on that tricep area as you lift the elbow up, words, right? Upwards, may not go all the way up, that's okay. 
and then maybe use your hand. It's always a maybe, right? Because you could do it without your hand. See the difference, see how it feels. Take a breath in and a breath out and a breath in and a breath out. So when we're doing this breathing in and out, we're lengthening through the sides of the body and release and let it go. All right, let's go into goddess or some people call this like straddle pose, like a horsey. Push down through your feet. So first let's push down through it. Now I can't see you and you can barely see me do this, but go ahead and push down through the right foot and notice what you feel as you press it down and then exhale and release. Notice how the muscles are activating. Let's push down through the left side. You can touch it. Sometimes giving a touch, you know, you, it gives you a tactile feedback here, right? And then release. Now let's push down through both. Push down through both feet. Push down through your thighs. Feel your belly tone and angle your sit bones down. That's a lot of work, even though someone's going, well, what is she doing? I don't know if I see anything here. And then exhale and release. Now go ahead, take your hands to the top of your thighs, push down. Now we're making side, the sides of the body get nice and long as we press down. Good, now make sure you're feeling even through your sitting bones. So push down through that right and left side about evenly and release. Good, let's take the left arm towards the right in a dyad, then circle it forward towards the left. Inhale, lift the arm upwards, elbow may be straight or bent, that's right. Press down through your feet again like we were doing and take a side bend now towards your right. Keep pressing both feet and thighs down. I'm feeling an inner thigh stretch at the same time. Open the arm up and release it down, other side. Right arm towards the left. Really take it long so you're feeling an extension from your right hip through the rib cage, through the arm, lengthen elbow and wrist. Push down through your feet, tack your hips down. Now circle it towards the right. Open it up and exhale, find your side bend. So lengthen, push down, find your side bend. If we just go to the side bend without doing all that prep work, the side bend isn't as grandiose, should we say, right? And then inhale and open it up and release it down. Now I want to play with a little bit of isolation of the ribs. I know you might have remember this from different classes when you were growing up. So you're going to take the ribs to the right, lean them to the right. That's it. Inhale towards the left. Notice if one side's easier to lean to. Now pull it towards the right, that's it. Breathe in, breathe out, go to the other side. So it's just the ribs moving. This is the, this is the tough part, the isolation. Bring the ribs back, that's it, you got it. Press down. So this is a little isolation. Notice the tendency to hold the breath here. Yes, come back to center. Let's bring our legs forward. That was a long time to keep them open and lifting your right leg up. Give it a hug. Give it a big hug in, lift tall. Let's circle the ankle around and about. Get that joint moving. And then we're gonna cross the leg over and hug the legs towards each other. Hug them in. So you're hugging your thighs towards each other. You're hugging your knees towards each other. You're hugging your ankles towards each other. 
Then let's do the cross. So you can either do the hug or we're gonna take right arm under left. Then we lift our elbows up. Your hands may or may not touch like this. It's okay if they're like that, it really doesn't matter or like this. Lift your elbows. Feel a lengthening through your spine up through your crown. Now, sometimes people's foot go behind the ankle or the calf doesn't make us any more enlightened. Now we're gonna twist. So take your elbows towards the right, breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, take your elbows towards the left. It's a little weirder, isn't it? and back to center, hands to the side of the chair, kick your leg forward. Heel can be down or up, down or up. Push out through the heel, toes are towards you, and release, other side. Lifting the left knee, feel your sitting bones on the chair as you lift up. Kneecap is upwards, it's skywards. Circle the ankle. Breathe in and breathe out, remembering our breath. That's what makes yoga different. It's not about all these contortions we do. They're kind of fun. Let's cross it over, thigh over thigh, hugging thighs towards each other maybe calves towards each other, maybe foot behind. Like I said, it doesn't make us any more, it, it's it, uh, any more of a guru, any wiser. It's just perhaps our body parts easily come together that way. Now we're gonna take the left arm under the right or elbows together, lifting elbows upwards. You can press the elbows away Feels like cat pose here a bit when you press them away because you're gonna feel a rounding in the back. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's take our twist now towards the left. Really feel that, That's, this is really our first twist. Breathe in and breathe out. Move the elbows towards the right just for the fun of it. We're doing all this for fun, right? and then let it go, hands to the chair, press the heel away, leg up or down. Leg up or down, belly pulls in and up. Breathe in and breathe out, pull it on in. Let's do a little bit more of an intense twist here. I'm gonna move this out so I can have the side view. Legs don't get, get cut off from your view. Extend both legs. Push the heels down, come towards the edge of the chair. Shoulders up and back. Press the heels down and pull them towards you. Notice how the heels tone. Now drag your right foot towards you so the heel is under the knee. Push down through that foot. Push down through that foot. Let's inhale, take the left arm forward maybe upwards, spread the fingers. Imagine that you have a wall in front of you and you're pushing into the wall. I'm even feeling a little bit of shaking through the arm, that's okay. Just imagine whenever you feel like you have a tremor or a little shaking, see if you can push into it. I don't mean resist it, I mean go with it. So that the energy is going with it push into the wall in front of you. Now let's take the hand outside the thigh and the right hand behind us, either on the chair or at a diag or holding onto the chair. That's my favorite because it really helps me get leverage into the twist. Lift up tall and then exhale, turning head last, feeling the right shoulder move up and back. Breathe in and breathe out, breath is in. Imagine this rippling effect, space in between each vertebrae as you inhale, 
exhaling and softening. Good, come back to center. Let's do a few cat cows, bring the left heel back in, exhale, round the spine. Inhale, lift up, lift the heart upwards. Push your palms into your thighs to make more space. The sit bones can move back behind you. So you're making a C curve with your spine. Exhale, round, lean back. Inhale, lift up. Good, now let's drag the right heel forward. Pull the toes towards you. Press down through the left foot. Press it down. As you press it down, feel what's happening. I'm feeling as I push down a little toning through the pelvic floor. Bring your right arm forward. Imagine there is a wall in front of you and you're pushing into it. Lengthening through the elbow, lengthening through the wrist. Notice if there's any pulsation or subtle movements in your hand or your arm. Press into that wall and then lift your heart upwards as, as you do so. Breathe in and exhale, find your twist now, other direction. Place your hand back behind you. Think of the twist as well as, as an opening through your heart, a widening across your shoulders blade. You can bend the elbows out to the side to feel expansion right and left. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, we fill. Feel the ribs right to left expanding. Exhale, softening. Good. Turn back to neutral. Back to center. Extend both heels. Push your heels down, pull your toes towards you. Exhale, point away. Inhale, pull in. Yes, exhale, point away. Inhale, pull in. And bring your feet back underneath your knees. Let's sway forward. So we're gonna inhale and sway the arms forward, making like a, a slanted line, like an arrow with our spine and our arms. And then exhale, swoop it back. Like you've got a beach ball back behind you and you're squeezing it. Inhale, arms forward, long. Feel the lengthening. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Now take a breath in. Fill all that space. Exhale, arms swing back. Now push your palms, go ahead and you can kind of squeeze back there, really press into this imaginary beach ball behind you. We're gonna do this on the earth too. Just a little heads up. So press in, little pulsation, inhale, swing it forward. Now we're gonna exhale and lower the arms down towards the earth. You might adjust your feet. Let your head go. Your hands can be on your shins. They can be on your thighs. They could even be on blocks beside you, like so. Head moves towards the right. Head moves towards the left. Breathing in. And breathe it out. Good, inhale, back to center, look halfway up. So hands on the blocks, the earth, or your thighs. Draw your shoulders up and back. Let your head be in line with your spine. So you don't want it dropping back like that. You don't want it dropping forward like that. You want to find that center point. Really feel inside. Pushing palms down, pulling shoulder blades towards each other. Good. On your inhale, swoop your arms forward and upwards and exhale, hands at the heart. Let's do a chair pose. I know it's your favorite, your favorite. 
favorite knot, right? You're probably thinking, where'd she come up with that? But we do it anyway, because it's good for us. <laughs> Hug your block if you have one. You can use the toilet paper roll, a tower paper tower uh, paper towel roll or an exercise ball or nothing and just imagine it's there. So we're gonna exhale and hug the block. Inhale, let it go. Exhale, hug the block. Inhale, let it go. Exhale, hug it in. Now feel your pelvic floor in and up. Feel it, pull it in and up. Those are the muscles at the base of your spine. Pull them in and up as you hug the block. There's a toning that's going on. Exhale, let that go. All right, one more time. This is your favorite, right? Hug it, hug it, hug it. Tone the pelvic floor. Exhale, release it. Why do I do this? Because we're going to do chair pose. It's good to have our core activated. If you have another block, you can use it. You can just take your arms forward or you can use a cane or a stick in front of you, whatever you'd like, whatever you like. Push your palms into the block, squeeze it, squeeze it. Release that squeezing. Okay, squeeze it one more time. Push your palms into the sides of the block. Push, 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 push. Release. All right, here we go. We're gonna lean forward and back. So if you don't have a block, no worries. Just use your arms forward or a stick or a cane. You know I love that. You know I love to do this one. It just gives us some momentum. It's kind of cool. Anyway, if you have the block, squeeze the block as you try to lift up. Maybe you lift, maybe you don't. Doesn't really matter. Engage your pelvic floor. Exhale, slowly lower down. What do I mean by doesn't matter? What really matters is the effort of activating the muscles, of even visualizing it. It's not necessarily about how high you lift up off the chair. All right, here we go again. Lean forward and back. You're either hugging your block, taking your arms forward in some way, and hips rise and sit bones move back. Hug the block, hug that block, hug it in between your thighs, pull up on the pelvic floor. Try not to let your head drop down. Try to keep your head in line with your spine in line with your arms forward. Will it be perfect? No. Exhale, let it go. I was just reading this mantra. I might've told you Wednesday it was, Progress over perfect. Progress over perfect. That's what matters. Progress over perfect. One more time. Here we go. Arms forward. Lean forward. Press down through your feet. Hug the block. Pull your pelvic floor in and up. So much to do. Oh, yes. If you want, take a twist to your right. If you want. If it's available to you, take a twist to your right. And you'll come to center and twist to your left. Yes. And you'll come to center. Ah, lower down. That was good. That was very good. Let's put all this down. Open and close your legs a few times. And we will go down to the earth for the second half of the class. You guys have been working. You guys have been working quite a bit. So if you have a chair, keep it. I'm gonna show you a few things. Well, I know most of you do have a chair. When we go down to the earth, I wanna show you a few things that you could do with the chair. Um, Mr. Asker, I need to get a blanket. So I don't mean to disturb you, very much. Oh my goodness, Asker. I'm so sorry that you fell off the blankets. Come over here. We're going to go down to the earth. And yes, I'm so sorry to disturb you. I know you were having a good nap. You might put a blanket underneath your knees. As you come on down, use your chair. Safety, safety, safety over speed. 
right? Safety is the top priority. And then we're gonna, with our hands on the chair, give yourself some space. So maybe make the blanket a little bit, won't take you up a little more space. So it gives you padding, but yet you can move forward and back. I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna have our hands on the chair. You can put your palms down. We're gonna slide forward and back a little bit here and just kind of slide just a little bit. And then we're gonna find our way to hands on the chair, arms are on the, arms are lengthening, but you can bend them if you're feeling shoulder pain, bend them. You can walk your knees back. And so what we're trying to do is lengthen. Take a few breaths here and really, really feel the sides of your body getting long. That's it. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Breathe in and breathe out. Then we're gonna walk in towards the chair. So you got the chair in front of you and you might move it a little closer to you. So you got that padding underneath your knees. And then we're gonna lift the left arm and maybe take the right hand to the arm and you're gonna take a side bend towards your left, your right. So take a side bend. You can also keep one hand on the chair. I'll face this way. Let's see if I don't know. That's gonna really, you won't see me well, but we'll see how this goes. I'll move this out of the way. So I'm facing the chair and doing a side bend. You can have one hand on the chair or both. And then inhale the center, exhale, lower the hand down, go for the other side, go for the other side, lift up, maybe one or both hands, find your, you're gonna find a little bit of traction here. If you're using your left hand to pull your right, especially, and then come back to center. I'm sure you're like, let me get off my knees. So one more, you might take your elbows on top of the chair towards the edge, walk your hips back and maybe take your forearms up like this. So we're just getting a little lengthening here. The more you walk your hips back, you can let your shoulder blades kind of drop down, sit bones rise. Try to keep your head so it's in line with your spine. So we don't want it yanking back. And then we'll come on in and let that go. Let all that go. Enough on the knees like that. Put the chair to the side. And let's do some cat cows. Little weight bearing. So spreading our fingers. Round your spine, chin to chest. Palms are just slight, slightly forward of your shoulders. Feel your tailbone move down towards your knees and your belly pulls in. Then reverse it. Shoulder blades come together, heart lifts, palms press down and towards you. Round it. And reverse it. Come back to neutral, extend the right leg long, press out through the heel. Let's stretch the calf. We really haven't done a lot of calf stretching yet. So roll the heel forward and back. You're just kind of shifting your weight back and forward. Front of the mat to the back of the mat. Then, now you can always be on your elbows or on your palms. If your hands are getting sore, your wrists are getting sore, you can always come on down here or you might roll your mat 
and place your wrists on the rolled mat. So it looks like this. This feels a little bit lighter on the wrists. We're gonna bend the knee and pull the heel towards the hip and then extend. Pull it in towards the hip. You notice your hamstrings are activating and extend. It's not about how far your heel comes to your buttocks. And then extend. One more time, pull it in nice and slow. And then extend the leg. You can put the toes down or leave it up. And maybe you take your left arm forward, hand on a block, or you lift your arm about shoulder height. Breathe in, breathe out. You can have leg and hand down too. Leg and hand can be down. Notice how you might be feeling a lot of weight through that left hip. I'm feeling it. And let's come on out of it. Let your hips go sway side to side. Take a little break. You can either sit back or you can go to a child pose like so, you might bend your elbows and take your hands back. Most importantly, feel the sensation as you breathe in and out. Let's press our hands down, rise back up, Extending the left leg. So extending the left leg, toes curl down, push the heel away. If they don't curl, that's okay. You can keep the foot like so, just gonna feel a little different. So we're pressing the heel away. You can also bend your knee a little bit, it's okay. We wanna get a stretch through the back of the calf. And I feel a little warming up through the bottom of the foot as well. You may lift the leg. You may bend the knee and pull the heel towards you and away. Go slow. I mean, if you kick it, that's a different feeling. We're going slow motion, heel towards buttocks. And then a lengthening feeling. Feel as you lengthening that you're hugging your quadricep, your thigh bone towards, or your thigh muscle towards your, your bone. Exhale, pull the heel in. Inhale, extend it away. Toes can come down or up for our spinal balance version. So we're taking our right hand either on a block, we can leave it down, we might move the fingertips forward, we may lift the arm about your height. Feel your belly tone. Gaze forward on the mat and downward. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breath is in. And breath is out. All right, we're gonna lower down now onto our bellies. So we're gonna come on down onto the belly. Take a little break here. Stack your hands and relax your forehead down. Let the hips sway right and left. Release any tension you might be feeling in your lower back. Release any tension you're feeling in your lower back. Then we're gonna inhale and lift the right leg. Extend the toes away from you as though someone was tugging on your, your foot or your ankle and lengthening back. Try to stay parallel on your hips so you're not swaying right or left. Try to feel even there. And then exhale, lower the leg down. Inhale, left leg lifts. 
feel a stretching across the left side of your hip on top of the thigh and through the leg. Tone the hip, hug the muscles to the bone, pelvis is level, and release. Let that go. Come up onto your forearms, maybe take a block in between your hands or your forearms and your pinky sides are down into the mat. So the pinky sides of the hands are down, hugging in to the block. Tone your hips as you lift your heart. You might feel a stretch through the front of your belly. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. See if you can feel that area where we were touching in the beginning of class back behind you. Just take your mind's eye to your shoulder blades. And we're gonna release on down. Let your arms be long. If that's not comfortable for you, let your arms come out to the side in a cactus. In fact, that's kind of a nice place to be, honestly. And we're gonna lift our right leg and our left arm. So either into cactus or arm forward for the left arm. You can use your right hand, push it down. So heart's lifting, back of the neck is long, no kinks in the neck, hip is toning. Exhale, release, releasing down, other side. So now right arm could be up in the cactus or forward, push down through the left arm as your heart rises. Left leg is lifting. Reach from your toes to your arm, your fingertips, lengthen the spine. Exhale, release, let that go. Now take your arms back behind you, relax your head to one side, take a little break for a moment. As you breathe in, feel your belly expand into the mat. Exhale, we soften. We're gonna come on up. Now you have a few choices. One is to imagine you've got a beach ball just like we were doing before when we were in the chair, push your palms into the beach ball. You could use a block or, or a strap back behind you. So here's the block, pushing the hands into the block. That's harder, you'll feel some muscles activating you might not have known about. You might lift your legs. I'll show it the other way. You can take a break. Here's where we might just interlace our fingers and extend the knuckles back, elbows bending, feels really nice. You could use a strap and hold a strap back behind you as well. Let's relax the head down, maybe towards the opposite direction. You just relax. And we're gonna press on up towards a variation of either table or down dog. So table or down dog, here's table. Curling toes under, we move towards the down dog. Lifting hips up, that's our, down do that's our down dog. Knees down or anywhere in between. You could have knees bent and be right here. And we're gonna release and come onto our sitting bones. That was a long time to be on the belly, on the knees. So now come onto your sitting bones and then onto your back. Take a strap with you, blanket with you, and come on down. We've done a lot of back bending. So let's do some lengthening through the legs. 
you know that's my favorite. So place the strap around your foot or interlace your fingers behind the thigh. Go ahead and really push the left foot down, lifting the right foot up towards the sun. Knee may be bent. In fact, you may pull the knee in towards you at first, towards your shoulder, and then press it up. And exhale, pull the knee in towards you, and then press it up. Find the length that's right for your right leg. Imagine you're pressing on the gas. So your big toe mound is pushing upwards, even if the knee isn't totally straight, that's okay. Then we're gonna turn the whole leg and the knee outwards. So the knee and the toes are turning out. Feel that hamstring. Take about three breaths here, three full breaths. Breathe in and breathe out. If you want more sensation, you lengthen the bottom leg, but you don't wanna do that at the expense of your spine. Then we're gonna turn the toes back towards us and open up the leg out to the side. Open it up. So leg is out to the side. Now the tendency is for the left hip to wanna come up and towards the right. Don't let that happen. Use your left hand and push that hip down. You could relax your foot on a chair. If you had a chair beside you, you could do something like that. You could have a block or a sofa or some type of foot rest and rest your leg on that. And we're gonna inhale, bring the leg back up. And we're gonna slowly lower it down. So this is gonna require some of that core work we were doing. You can have your hands down by your side. You're only gonna go as far to lower the leg where your spine is, your belly's pulling into your spine and your spine is pulling down into the, the earth, the mat, and then you start to lower. If your lower back starts to curve up, bring your leg back up. So this isn't how far you lower the leg down. So we're starting to lower when the lower back starts to curve. Stop, readjust, push out through the heel, take a breath in, pull the belly in and up, decide if you wanna go a little bit further down or not. Maybe you're ready to pull that knee back in. And that's what you do. We pull it back in and release the foot down. We're gonna do the left side. So you're gonna take the strap around your left foot now, or your hands behind your thigh. Either one works. There's different, it actually feels different. If the hands are behind the thigh, you're pushing the thigh away from you. You're still pushing it away but this gives you a little bit of something to press into, which is really nice. Feeling that sensation of the hamstring lengthening. With the tie on the foot, that's a different kind of feeling, but it's awesome as well, but it feels a little different. Now the energy, we're pulling the strap down into the arch of the foot, and you may feel the lengthening in a slightly different place. Let's turn the toes and the kneecap outward. Take about three to five breaths here. You can always take longer because it really does take some time to stretch out. Doesn't happen right away. The longer you stay, the longer your muscles are in your fascia. And then we inhale toes back to neutral leg comes out to the side. Now we're gonna to try to keep the right hip down. So we don't want the right hip to roll like that. I'm exaggerating, but try to keep it down and level. You're still pressing the heel away. You might feel some little shaking going on here. So that's natural when we're lengthening a tight muscle. 
And you can also use that same theory we were talking about when we were in the chair, push the spasm or this pulsing away from you towards like you're pushing into a wall or somebody's hand. So you're giving the pulsation or the spasm, however you want to call it, you're giving it direction as you press it into something. We're going to inhale the leg back up. Release the tie or your hands. And we're going to place our hands down on the mat. Feel our shoulder blades touching. Notice which parts of your spine are touching. Because they're not all touching because we have curves in our spine. So it's when the lower back curve gets too big that that can cause pain because it's curving up. There's more space under there. We're gonna start to lower the leg and stop if you start to feel any lower back pain, just stop. You can use your right foot to push down. We're slowly lowering the leg. You make your adjustments how low it should go. We're pulling the belly in and up. This is core work. This is core work and then pull it back in. Maybe do it again. So you're kind of making this circular motion and then you're gonna press out, belly pulls in. If there's lower back pain, pull that knee back in. Take your time. And then we'll bring it in. Both feet are on the earth. Take your hands to your belly, breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's go for happy baby. We did so many back bends, so we got to curl our spine a bit. So bring your knees in towards you. You can massage your spine right and left as you roll. Rolling is good too, it's core work, right? So you can roll and massage. You can also go a little bit of forward and back action if that feels okay to you. Then we're gonna spend a little more time opening up the hips and the thighs. So bring your right foot down and keep your left knee in towards you and pull the left knee towards your shoulder footprint up towards the sky, pull it on in. You can use both hands. You might, if this, if it's not feeling like it's enough, you can go ahead and extend the right leg. But if you're feeling plenty, stay there. From here, we'll go to number four. Gentlemen's pose. You may hug your knees in towards you. You might use your left hand to gently press the thigh away. Feet are flexing. Full breath in. Full breath out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Let's release the legs down. Maybe swish the knees right and left a few times. And then pull the other knee in towards you. This is my right knee. So I'm doing the opposite side, pulling the knee towards the shoulder. You can use one hand, you can use both hands. Depends where you can reach. You're just pulling the knee towards your shoulder. This might be plenty. So the sensation would be right around here in the back of the thigh. You might extend the opposite leg. Maybe, maybe not. And then we'll go to number four. So ankle over thigh. The foot can be down or it can be up as we pull the knees in towards us. You can weave your hands in between your legs, sensation is in the outer hip or inner thigh. 
it's a good, it's a good feeling, you know, it's, there's a little bit of discomfort and it's just reminding you our hips get really tight from all the sitting, our lifestyles. It's good that you are moving. Give yourself that pat on the back for engaging in this practice. Let's release both legs down. We're gonna find our final twist. So you can move your knees or your hips a little bit to the left and pull your knees in towards you and let them fall to the right. Arms can be in cactus. Arms can be long. You might wanna play a little bit more with taking the left arm towards the right and then opening it up a few times and then find relaxation in your twist. So you might open, close it and then open it. Head turns towards the left if that feels available to you. You don't wanna stress your neck out. Feel the breath and how it fills your body as you twist. And we're gonna turn the head back to neutral, the knees back upright, shift the hips to the right, the knees to the left. We are in cactus or arms and tea. And you know, you can always stay longer in any of these poses. Notice what you're feeling. I'm feeling some opening across the front of the pec region here in this twist. A twist isn't just for the spine, it is for the spine. A lot of people feel it in their hips and many people feel it in their upper body towards their shoulder area, their collarbone. You might extend the right arm and meet it towards the left, opening it up a few times. That can help. Just kind of ease the opening and the twisting. And then enjoy three to five, maybe 10 breaths in your twist. It's your practice. Head may turn towards the right a little bit. And we're gonna come back to neutral, feet on the earth. Feel the back of your head and let it sway towards the right and towards the left. Feel the weight as it shifts. Go nice and slow with your head towards the right, real slow. Feel the heaviness, the weightiness as the head turns to the right. Head moves upright, head leans to the left. Heads back upright and then find your version of the relaxation pose. Legs may be up on a chair, arms are down by your side or maybe hands on your belly. Maybe you wanna lying down butterfly for a bit with your blocks underneath the knees. That's nice too. Find a pose where you can relax and let your body totally give way, totally relax onto the earth. Some people say that the relaxation pose is the most challenging pose. It's hard for us in this culture to give ourselves the permission to just be, but you just moved your body in so many different directions. And your body needs that time to assimilate. It's kind of like a recalibration. So you're actually receiving tremendous benefit from a relaxation pose. You've put your nervous system in the kind of a trance with your breath and with your mindful movement.
And now it's time to soften the breath and soften the body. Softening, melting, breathing in and breathing out. You can stay as long as you want in your resting pose. Give yourself permission. It's the beginning of the weekend. Traditionally, Shavasana is 10, 15 minutes. A lot of times on these classes where we're online, we always say, you go ahead and relax, even though we know we're supposed to end. Feel the whole body relaxing and breathing in this whole sensation of living. Feel the life running through you. Closing this class of our time together you may come to seated or choose to be right where you're at. We bring our palms together in front of our heart as a symbol of gratitude. Gratitude for this practice. Gratitude for our community and the support of the Michigan Parkinson Foundation. Namaste, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend.